All right. So that was the last of our of our iterative ones. We did kind of one tier, two tier, and three tier in terms of nested for loops. So what we then get into um, is these ones a little bit further down, uh, where we've got i is equal to n, and then we have while um, i is greater than or equal to 1, x um, is equal to x plus 1, and i is equal to i divided by 2. So it's halving every time. Um, and I personally don't ever think we really got a good answer or a good explanation of this. Um, there was some stuff in the lecture notes, but I feel like we skimmed over it. Um, so this is basically just taking uneven steps. Uh, and it's a little bit tricky because all of a sudden we don't know how many iterations we have. So let's say we want to convert this into our sum notation, which we do want to do. Uh, so we have the cost is equal to the sum of, okay, so i equals n, um, 2. Well, what do we actually want to go to here? If you think about it, we're going until i is greater than 1. But I personally find it easy to kind of flip this whole thing um, on its head rather than going from i equals n to um, 1. Kind of just flip it around. So if we go f from i equals 1 to n, it just kind of like uh, makes this whole thing a lot simpler. If you kind of think, if we're trying to get to um, 16 and we start from 1 and we go times 2 is um, 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, we've had four iterations. Um, and if we want to go back the other way, if we start from 16, if we say i equals 16, um, and then we say divided by 2 gives us, so this was the first iteration, divided by 2 um, gives us 8, divided by 2 gives us 4, divided by 2 gives us 2, divided by 2 gives us 1. Um, and so we kind of have, oh, if we don't count the first line, like in the same way for both of these, we also have four iterations. So in terms of, of the number um, of iterations and everything, they're exactly the same. Um, and I generally just flip it around. So from i equals n divided by 2 every time to get to 1 is exactly the same as i equals 1 times 2 every time until you get to n. Um, so that just seems much easier for me to count. Uh, and so the problem here is that we don't know, actually, so this is an n, uh, and this is an important difference. That's not n, um, because if n here was 16, we noticed that we only actually had to do four iterations to get to 16. So in this case, um, when i is, sorry, when k is 4, n was 16. So there is this relationship between n and k. Um, so let's say we start at 1, and now we go, okay, times 2 gives us 2, times 2 gives us 4, times 2 gives us 8, times 2 gives us uh, 16. And so this is our column of n for given n values. And over here, how many iterations do we actually do? And that's our k. Well, we do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or, I guess since it um it doesn't really perform on the first time. You can kind of just think of it as starting at um, as starting here. One, two, three, four, because it just gets set to i the first time. The very first time it actually increments it is already timesing by two. So if we kind of have a look at the relationship between these, what is the relationship between these numbers and those numbers? And there is one, and it is basically that. 2 to the power of k is equal to n. So if we think about it, if we have 2 to the 1, that is equal to 2. 2 to the 2, that is equal to 4. 2 to the 3, that is equal to 8. And 2 to the 4, that gives us 16. So the relationship between k and n actually can be expressed, where k is the number of iterations that it actually takes. So the number of, remember, the number of iterations is the number of times we perform the basic operation. Um, the relationship between the number of times we actually perform the basic operation of the number of times we iterate through this loop and what n was is 2 to the power of k is n. 
as we can kind of see here. Um, so once we kind of get that, that we're iterating from 1 to k, um, and we're counting 1 each time, and we know that 2 to the power of k equals n, that obviously also means that uh, log base 2 of um, n, log base 2 of n, equals k. Is kind of how we can rewrite that. So first of all, we can expand this out the way that we normally do, right? So um, if this was a known variable, we end up with just k minus 1 plus 1, using that rule that I've written out a bunch of times, which is equal to k. Uh, and since we know that k is equal to log base 2 of n, we can just substitute that back in for log base 2 of n, um, which is obviously bound by theta g of log n. So it's actually, <coughs> these uneven steps really aren't that hard. All you need to do is find a relationship between n, the input value, and k, this made-up number, which is the number of iterations that we actually do, uh, and we're just doing it once. So once you kind of find this relationship, it's really not that difficult. And it kind of makes sense here. You're timesing by 2 every time. And when you times by 2 every time, you kind of end up with first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, fourth iteration, which kind of makes it not surprising that the formula is going up in terms of 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4. So this relationship 2 to the k, uh, k is the number of iterations equals n, is quite logical once you get your head around it. Um, and yeah, timesing 2 every time is just mentally easy to think, but um, if you go through the math of dividing by 2 every time, it's the exact same number of iterations, so it's the same. You can make the math work out if you do that, I just find it messier. Um, so the relation here is log base 2 of n, which is exactly what we're taught that um, dividing by 2 or timesing by 2 every time is, and so that all works.